washindi kanyaga kanyaga kwa ujasiri jina la Kristo la shinda vyote mamlaka tumepewa na uwezo tumepewa tutakanyaga kanyaga mapepo kujira ndugu twaidi watembea tembea wana wa Mungu kanani kwetu tutafika Tuahidi watembea tembea wana wa Mungu kana ni kwetu tutafika Mamlaka tumepewa na uwezo tumepewa tutakanya kanya kama pepo kujira ndugu tuahidi watembea tembea wana wa Mungu kana ni kwetu tutafika kwetu tutafika mamlaka tumepewa na uwezo tumepewa tutakanya kanya kama pepo kujira ndugu twaidi watembea tembea wana wa Mungu kana ni kwetu tutafika
vile vikawa Ebeneza amini na atatenda Aletae faraja wa wanyonge Ndiye mungu wa yale Ya siyo wezekana imanweli Shanjia, pasipunjia Ata kwenye tanuru, nani ya moto Katika giza nene, mika eli yukane wako Imanweli unawe, utashida
kibili kidogo so bibi bwana atakutendea yopo asiye choka kamwe halali kamwe kwa ajili yako yeye au bwa juu yako usikumchana ni mwana wa Mungu Happy Sabbath church. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. Uh, it's a special Sabbath that is before us. And before we start, shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this given opportunity that you've given unto us. We want to thank you for allowing us to see this day, which is a special day in our life, Father. Father, we've come before you, seen as the way we are. We are asking for the forgiveness of our sins, Father, that you may forgive us our sins as we come before thee, Father. Father, this morning, in a special way, we want to place to my inner church unto your hand. As you want to start this special service of today, we call upon your Holy Spirit to come down and be with us. 
uh, we start this special song service, Father, may you guide us, send your Holy Spirit to be with us, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, in a special way, we want to welcome you all in this special service for today. It is our first, it is our first visual service for the Tumaini SDA Church. And all are welcome as we start this service today. Thank you. We want to start our song service. And uh, we want everyone to have your songs book so that we may have our songs as we wait for the Sabbath school session. And we are going to start with the song number 22 from our hymnal books. And uh, our Kiswahili songbook, song number 22. Before us here, we are three choristers. We have from the far hand, we have our brother Nicholas Ondimu. He's one of the choristers. We have our head choristers, Ruth Mudini, and Hezbon Omolo, who is the lead choristers. Thank you very much as we get into the song service. We are going to start with song number 22, Usini Pite Mokozi, and we'll sing together. Usini Pite Mokozi, sing. Usini pite mokozi unisiki e unapozuru wengi ne usini pite buana buana unisiki e. Pozuru wengine Usini pite Kiti chako charehema Na kitazama Magoti na piga pale Nisamewe Buwana, buwana, unisiki Unapozuru wengine, usinipite Sinaja kutegemea Budu Bona Bona Uni Seki Una Pozuru Engine Usini Pete Wewe Tumfari Kote Wala mwingine Wana Wana Unisiki Unapozuru Wengine Usinipite One of five, number one of five from our songbooks. Mchungaji Mpenzi, Mchungaji Mpenzi, Ukuita Uje. 
sing. Mchunga jimpenzi ukuita uje Katika zizi lake panapo salama Akina wana wake wa ume vijana Yesu alie kwele uwa ita kwa ke Uita kwa moyo wa hurumo Ulie pote ya ute kwangu Ivi kukungo jahona domo Wana Yesu mchunga Akato amai isha Kwa ajili yetu Ataka wapote u Wate kwa kesasa Tusiji ya turi kwa kete salama Siki ya wito wake Mchunga jiwetu Uwita kwa moyo wa hurumo Ulie pote ya uje kwa ngu Ivi kukungo jahana domo Wana Yesu mchunga Tusika wie tena Adu ishe tani Kama mbo wa mwitu Ata tunaribu Tunaito na Yesu Mkomozi wetu Tuingie zizine Pona pona fasi Uita kwa moyo wa urumo Ulie pote ya uje kwa ngu Ivi kukungo ja anadomo Wana Yesu mchunga Number 108 Number 108 from our songbook. Okay. Tu me si ki ambio sing. Tu me si ki ambio Yesu wako utanga zeni kote. Yesu wako wa tini amrio Injini baharini eneze nibi Yesu wako wa imba na we askari Yesu kwa ngubu ya kombozi Yesu wako wa Imbeni wenye shida Unapo umwa moyo Na kaburi ni imba Yesu wako wa Mawimbi ni uwene Yesu wako wa Wenye dhambi juweni Yesu wako wa Visi wana vile Vilini iti 
keni na je shangi de o yesu wako wa upepo utangaze yesu wako wa mataifa ya shanga yesu wako wa milimani bondeni sauti yesekike ya wimbo wa washindi yesu wako wa thank you very much for the song service Uh, it's a nice sabbath that god has blessed us with and now we're going to, to start our lesson discussion before we start uh, i want to introduce my colleague uh, our elder samuel okini to greet the congregation okay asante uh, 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 before we start the lesson discussion uh, let's pray tuombe tunakushukuru mungu sababu umekuwa mwema kwetu mungu Angaria siku ya leo tunaenda katika lesoni Mungu tunaomba wewe sikutuongoza na saidi ya yote tutakapoongelea Mungu iwe ya manufaa na ya kujenga kilo kilo Mungu angalia kanisa letu atumaini tunaweka mikono mwako washiriki wote wanapokuwa huko nyumbani wakitutasama Mungu tunasema ni asante Mungu eh, maupili atakapofanyika mchana ya leo pia tunaweka mikono mwako Mungu wese kuongoza na yote yatendeke kutokana na mapenzi yako tunaomba kaka yetu Yesu bwana mkombozi wetu Amen. Eh, tunaenda kuanza lesoni yetu na ni lesson number four katika our quarter. Na uh, the key text eh, inatoka the book of uh, Genesis 17 eh, verse 7. Uh, na pia the topic is an everlasting covenant. An everlasting covenant. That's our, our, our topic today. Na tukiangalia the book of Genesis. Genesis from verse 1 mpaka verse 11. Tunaangalia kwamba 
Verse 1 creation inaanza uumbaji wa dunia Mungu akaumba dunia akaumbwa na vyote vidimomo duniani Tukiangalia pia dhambi ikaingia Dhambi ilipoingia watu binadamu wakaanza kutengana na Mungu Lakini tukiendelea kuongea tutaona kwamba kuna pia covenant inakuja kuingia sasa redemption kupitia covenant Mungu anataka kuturudisha wote atukuje karibu na ye na hapo sasa tunaona covenant uh, our ancestors uh, ambao ni Abraham wasazi wetu wa, wa kwanza wameingia covenant na Mungu na kutoka hapa sasa redemption inaingia na tukiangalia pia introduction ya Mungu katika uh, uh, na, uh, Mungu na Abraham tunaona Mungu anatumia majina mbalimbali mbali introduce kwa Abraham ndipo sasa Abraham aweze kumuelewa zaidi Eh, tukisoma kwanza tukisoma our key text from the book of uh, uh, Genesis Genesis 17 verse 7 and it says I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after the throughout uh, the generation for the everlasting covenant to be uh, to be God uh, to you and for you uh, to your ancestors after you tunaona kwamba Mungu anaongea na Abraham na eh, ile tunaona muhimu sana ni kuweza kuweka mikakati vile ataweza kumpatia covenant ambayo nimeambia kwamba ah, ni redemption dhambi inapoingia Mungu ameona ameanza kuweka mikakati ya kuleta binadamu karibu na yeye ukiangalia Genesis uh, uh, 12 uh, 11 tunaangalia kwamba kuna ile dhambi ya Tower of Babel munara imeanza kujengwa na hii munara ikijengwa naona watu wameanza ku, 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 kuwa na akili eh, mingi wanataka kukubishana na Mungu lakini Mungu naye anawaambia pana eh, Mungu ndio Mungu na binadamu akae kuwa binadamu ndio naona sasa Mungu ameanza kuleta hiyo uhusiano yeye na Mungu eh, eh, elder Samuel suji ulisoma nini kuhusu utangulizi Asante sana <clears throat> the way he has explained is that God has always looked for his people. From creation, after he has created everything very good, and Adam and Eve, when they failed, it is God who went for them. God has been calling people, like we saw from last week, he, he, he is the one who put a covenant between him and Noah. Now, today, we are looking at the everlasting covenant which he has put with Abraham. What God is showing is that he is looking for us all the time. There is an analogy he has given here and he said, have you ever thought that one day when you were young, when you were very young, and one time you had pneumonia or you had a cold and you were feeling so cold and you found your father or your mom who came and sat next to you at the bed. That is the way God comes to us. When we are down, completely down and we don't, we don't have anything to do, he comes and sits next to us. And that is what God is doing. Everlasting covenant is that he made the covenant with Abraham, and the covenant was not at the end, the end of Abraham only, but it is Abraham and his generation. In Genesis chapter 12, when he called Abraham, he is promising him that it is him who is blessed, and all the generations which will follow what Abraham is doing. Amen, Elder. Uh, what we want to look uh, in, in this uh, lesson, we want to, to see how God identifies himself to Abraham. Next, we want to see how God changing the name of Abraham. And the next, uh, the, 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 the last thing we want to see is how uh, God is giving Abraham conditions, obligation, before uh, the covenant is uh, agreed between God and Abraham. 
on, 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 on Sunday's uh, part, we want to see God introducing himself to, uh, to Abraham as Yahweh. Elder, Yahweh, uh, uh, namna gani? Thank you. Yes. Yahweh and the Abrahamic covenant. How do we find the name of God here? When we give names and before I go to the Semitic people or that is the Middle East, names are very important and they describe who you are. For example, we are given a story of, of David and Nabad. When Nabad's wife realized David was going to destroy Nabal, she came and told David, my husband is called Nabal because that is what he is. Names are very important. They describe who you are. If you continue calling somebody a name, you call somebody ugly or stupid or the name you call him eventually makes what that person is. But if you call somebody a good name, a good name refers everybody when you are naming a child you want to refine the Bible and give a, a name of somebody who was very good. For example, my name is Samuel. When I grew up and realized who Samuel was, was an obedient child, I tried to be obedient. You try to be what that name is. Now, God is coming to a prime and it te tells him, I am I am the one who called you out of holy of the charities. I am. Even later, some years later, 400 years later, Moses is telling the children of Israel, I am has sent me. So the name here, when we see Yahweh and the Abrahamic covenant, it is an agreement because Abraham accepted when he was called to move from his, his home in holy, he accepted. So I am or Yahweh, or Ayah, there are all these names, they refer to God. God has a name. The same way you have a name, and you always try to be like that name you are called. Thank you, Ella. Uh, have you heard, as Ella has said, names have an impact to our, to our lives? What name are, are you called? Let's say, uh, uh, I'm, I'm Robert. In our traditional setup, uh, the names had a meaning. Kama mimi na ito Oyaro, our ancestors, our, our, our parents, wariono kwamba, the, the character I'm, I'm called Oyaro, adikuwa ni mutu ambaye mi tabi yake adikuwa mzuri, and they saw that it's good me to be called that name Oyaro in a way that uh, to show the character of the deceased about in, in, in our traditional naming it comes after the one uh, has died so the name has an impact to one's life but when you see God uh, introducing himself to Abraham as Yahweh there's three things I'm, I'm seeing here identification number two the name the name Yahweh means God uh, and the character I think we know the character of God. Now, to carry the character of God, it's God is a uh, God ambaye ni mumbaji na ni mungu wa kila mtu. Mungu ni mungu wa kusame. Na ni mungu ni mungu wa mpango. That's the character ambaye tunaona kutoka kwa the word yawe. Na uh, to kienda on, on, on Monday, to know the word El Shaddai. Also God introduced himself to uh, Abraham uh, through the, word, uh, the name El Shaddai. Uh, El Shaddai means Almighty God. Elder, would you say nini? Would you allow nini? As per the word El Shaddai, name El Shaddai. As we have said from above, that the name before me and be thou perfect. You know, these are many years. God has talked to Abraham, and Abraham has accepted the call. He is living with he, he has, he is living with God. But there is one thing Abraham is missing. 
He doesn't have a child. And God comes to him and tells him, I am the Holy Mighty. I am the powerful God. I know you are talking about having a child. You are looking at everything you left in, 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 in the whole of the charities. You are thinking of a child. I am God. I am Holy Mighty. I am all powerful. I will give you a child. And when we look at this, we look later on how, uh, the, the steps, is that Abraham, Abraham has accepted. He has accepted the call from the Almighty. He is the one who gives more power. When we say her shall die is almighty. I give all power. There is nothing which is which I am not able to do. So this is God who can do everything. There is nothing he cannot do. Thank you, Ella. Uh, as we uh, as our elder said, Abraham was 99 years. And uh, he, has, he has been told that you want to get a child. But Abraham is saying, hey, I'm old. How can I get a child? I'm old. But God is introducing himself to Abraham, telling, me, telling him, I'm the powerful God. Hakuna kitu za kunishinda. Mimi ndio mungu. Mimi ndio dunia. Mungu ambea mungu dunia, ameweka vyote. Na sasa unawakopa nini? The power of God inaonekana hapa sasa. Na ndiposa anamambia, eh, Mimi kama mungu, hakuna chote zetaisa kunishinda. Na ukiwana Abraham, badae, eh, anata, a, mungu akimambia unaweza kupata ki, mtoto ambaye atakuwa ni kijana, na kupitia wewe, ukoo, ama urimengu itajasika. Ita, ita, ita kupitia wewe, utajasa urimengu. Na sasa Abraham amekuja, sasa amekubari, sasa mungu ameniambia, ameturia sasa. Kwa hivyo, Tunaona Mungu ameweza kuchionyesha kwamba yeye ndio mwenye nguvu kupitia the word as shadai I'm the almighty. Eh, ukiangalia the, 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 the book of Genesis 7 verse 1 ambayo ina, 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 inaongea kuhusu eh, Mungu vile anakindulisha kwa Abraham. Eh, tunaenda kuangalia pia eh, from Abraham anapopadisha jina Abraham, Abraham to Abraham Amba from the book of Genesis 17, verse 4 and 5. Uh, Ella, Uripata Nini. Thank you. It is from Abraham to Abraham. At I started, I said, the name shows who you are. Abraham is a father who is exalted. A father exalted. But look at the covenant of God to Abraham. What did God want Abraham to be? He's going to be a father of the nation. Kingdoms will come from him. You know, in most cases, we come from where when an old man is dying, the young children always are coming closer. They want to be blessed. They want to hear that when they become old, they will have from riches and leadership, power and everything. And here we have Abraham, who has moved from all of the Chaldees, and he has gone to a strange land. He is not living in Hul, he is living in, in, in Canaan, where he was a stranger. And God has promised him, when you stand by me, I will give you kingdoms from your home. I will get your name to be known everywhere. So he changed the name from a father exalted to a father of nations and the kingdoms. And that is Abraham. Why was he doing this? God changed it because it is what you are. And you are called what you are. And we find in the Bible, we have similar stories taking place. For example, we have Jacob, who was the grandson of Abraham. Jacob, as he grew, he stole the birthright of his brother. And he ran away from home. He was a fugitive. But when he came back, his mind was sticking into God. That's why he fought 
with uh, the angel in the, uh, in the wilderness. And God, and in the morning, the angel told him, your name will change from Jacob, a deceiver, to Israel. Israel means a nation. The name will change. Because he prevailed. Why do we say that uh, Jacob prevailed? When he fought with God, he prevailed. You know, when in most times we are in, in, complete in sin, and when we are fighting in sin, we don't allow God to fight for us so that he will win. So Jacob didn't let go until he won. The other person who, who, whose name was changed is Joseph. Joseph is sold to bondage in the strange land that is Egypt. And when he has grown up, because he has to be like those people, like the Egyptians, they changed the name from Joseph to Sovereignty. Panessa. Why? So that he can be an Egyptian. He is no longer a Hebrew. That's why the name was changed. What about Daniel? Daniel and his friends, when they are in Babylon, their names are changed from the Jewish name to Babylonian, Babylonian names. So names depict who you are. Even you yourself, go and look at what your name is. It's better. You live like your name. Like mostly we Christians, our names, we have Christian names. We always go for the best names. Those characters, the character you are, you are, your name is. You can go and change it if it is not good, so that you have a good name and leave a character as that one. And with this in mind, uh, we need to give, to give our lives in Jesus who will change our names. Amen. Ella, Ella has told us about the character behind your name. Uh, uh, question yourself, what's your name? What's the character behind your name? Then from there, it, it will show who, whom you are. Uh, we, we, go, uh, we are going to see uh, from the book of uh, Genesis 17, verse 4 and 5, and uh, it says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall you, uh, your name, uh, sh neither shall your name any more be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham, for the father of many nations have made you. Na, na apa, naona kwamba mungu ame, ame badrisha jida ya Abraham kumbatia confidence kwamba ukienda sasa vile na command atoke mahali anaishi aende nchi nyingine ambayo ni Egypt anambatia jina ambaye akienda huko awe na confidence kwamba sasa mimi sio yule ni sasa Abraham Abraham wa Kitambo ni Abraham ambaye nimebadilishwa na hii jina amepatiwa karakta yake sasa itachionyesha ita na tukiendea kusoma unaona kwamba from there Abraham sasa ameweza kupata ame, alienda kabarikiwa ameweza ukoo yake imeanza ku eh, eh, alianza kupata watoto na unaona inchi imeanza kuwa eh, tumepata inchi kupitia yeye watu wamejaribu mwangu kupitia yeye kwa hivyo the character of your name ni ya maana sana tukiendelea ku, eh, ku, kuongea tunaangalia tuangalie on Wednesday ambayo inasema covenant stages Mungu anapoongea na Abraham imefika wakati sasa wanataka kuingia kwa covenant ambao tunaenda kuangalia Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2 anamcommand nao toka nimepatisha jina yako sasa enda nendeni na inchi anaenda kuenda ni inchi geni but sababu amempatisha jina Confidence, uh, I'm, I'm again confidence na sasa anaenda kulingana vile mungu amemwambia ame na mahali ukumbuke mahali anaenda ni mahali uh, watu ni wageni ni foreign land ya yeah, hajui lakini mungu kwanza mbeleni alimwambia kwamba I'm God I'm almighty ukinitegemea kila kitu takuwa swari na sasa anatoka na tuenda kuangadea stage number two ambapo sasa elders uh, uh, stage number 2 na stage number 3 
we have covenants, covenant stages. You know our God is a God of arrangements. He plans his work. He doesn't do things like a less character. He doesn't do things going up and down. He, go, he does things in stages. When you look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, just read it and see and look at and see what it says. It says, And the God commanded Abram to move from all of Charities. He commanded him. When you look at it, read it properly up to verse 3, you'll see these are the stages you'll see there. Number one, move from your people from the people you, live, you, 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 are, you are acquainted with. Move from the work you, want, you do. Move from your, uh, the things you like most in your mind. You know, we like, we, like, we like things. There are things we like. When we live here, we go to our homes, there are some things we like most. But you are commanded, move, stop what you love most. And that command, Abraham accepted. He accepted to move. That's number one. Number two, God promised him. Number one was he commanded him. Number two, he promised him. When you have moved, when you have stopped what you are doing, I will bless you. I will make you to be a, a part of nations. I will multiply you. Who doesn't need all this? All oh, that's what we need. So God commands. Then he promises. And number three, he establishes a covenant, an agreement. That is what takes place when you read the Abraham's, Abrahamic covenant, you will find it is a covenant, it is an everlasting covenant, which is even for us here. God has commanded us to move from where we are. Number two, he has promised us when we come to him, he will bless us. And number three, he has given a covenant. He has given a promise that we will live with him forever. So the, the stages to Abraham are the same stages to us all. We have been commanded, we have been promised, and we have established a covenant with our God. That is eternal kingdom. Amen, Ella. Uh, as Ella said, stage one, it was a, a command. Move, get out. Then we go to stage two, and stage three now the fulfillment of the covenant. Uh, if we, we, we look at Galatians 3, uh, verse 7, uh, that thus, as for Pak, uh, as Abraham, the Lord in, 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 intention was to save as men human being as equal, uh, whatever nations uh, they lived in. No doubt it's not different today. Kwamba, mungu, okay, tulipa soma uh, uh, about the everlasting covenant. Tulona hii covenant ilikuwa ya wakatu Abraham, wakatu yetu, na baro wakatu inakuja, hata kama siya tutakuwa, baro itakuwa existing. Kwa hivyo, niya ya mungu ilikuwa ni kuokoa watu wote ambapo wanya alikuwa wakatu Abraham na wakatu yetu, hata tutaka patoka ulimunguni, wanya tabaki. Nia ya Mungu pia ni kwa kwa Mungu hataki watu wapoteke au wapote. Ndio maana anaweka hii covenant. Mwenye atakayefuata jamii ni hatapotea. Kwa hivyo we as Christians na pia tumeambiwa tuambie wenzetu kule nje kwamba Mungu anakuja. Kwa hivyo tuweze kufuata, kufuata hii covenant ambapo hii agreement imeweza kuwekwa ni kwa ajili ya maisha yetu. Eh, pia Tunangadia pia kuna covenant obligations. When you sign an agreement, maybe a contract, I, I, my elder maybe want to supply me milk, but I want this milk to be uh, supplied to me daily. There's an agreement I will make with uh, elder. Kwamba hii masiwa ndakona muliba siningi amsini kwa 500 liters. Na nikienda against this uh, agreement, atakata uh, uh, supply yake ya masiwa kwangu. Na ya kienda again, sita mulipa. Kwa hivyo, but God is making an agreement 
That's an obligation uh, to Abraham. No, but on that side of God, yeah, Mungu ana tunaona kama kwangu naona kama Mungu hakuna hakuna gain anataka kutoka kwa Abraham lakini anataka Abraham na, 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 na descendants wake wasije wakapotee na kuna vitu tatu anamuomba kwanza kwanza love faith na obedience na tukiangalia love naona kama inatuweza inaweza kutufungulia saidi unapopenda mwenzako From the beginning tunaona tunaona kwamba uh, on, on Sunday pa tulikuwa tumeambiwa kwamba eh, ukiwa unapenda mwenzako hata dhambi ile tulikuwa tumeambiwa kwamba ilikuwa yako haitakuwa sasa sababu umependa mwenzako utamfanyia dhambi namna gani kwa hivyo those are the obligations amba uh, Moses amesa and Abraham amesa kupatiwa na, na, na Mungu elda uri uri soma nini uweze kuambia wanatumaini Amen. Uh, El has told us we keep uh, the way of the of, of Lord. We do justice. And we do uh, uh, ju justice and judgment to others. I think El when you love your friend, when you love your, your brother, your neighbor, I think you you do justice to him. I think that's what what God wants from, from us. And also faith God wants people to be uh, the descendants of Abraham to be faithful to him. Kwa hivyo uh, those are the obligations that God gave Abraham. As we move ahead, we want to see uh, maybe the summary of this uh, lesson uh, uh, this uh, uh, Sabbath. And you, you give us a summary 
Can you conclude now at the lesson? to do to be faithful to love one another and also to do justice to others i think when you we crown that one to one that's love when you love your brother i know you do good for him as we wait for the coming uh, of uh, coming second coming of our jesus christ to to wambe ndio tuweze funga lesoni so we can move uh, i do with another programs to wambe Tunashukuru Mungu. Mungu umetuongoza katika kipindi cha lezoni. Tumeweza kusoma Mungu kwamba umeweza kutuita. Na tumeweza kuweka mkataba sisi eh, na wewe Mungu kupitia our parents ambao ni Abraham. Na sasa Mungu tumeweza kupatua njia ya kutumikia na njia ya kutumikia sababu Mungu atukuoni macho kwa macho. Lakini tunaona ndugu yetu ambaye yako karibu na mimi. Ndio nikimuona ndugu yangu ni vile nimekuona Mungu. Kwa hivyo Mungu tunaomba uweze kuwa nazi na leo, yote tumeweza kusoma kwa siku ya leo uweze kutujenga kiroho na tukiongoja kuja kwako kwa, kwa uh, mara ya pili. Tunaomba machache katika jina la Bwana mkombozi wetu. Amen. service back again we are the three of us and we are going to start with the song number 110
and I request all the congregation. So we have a, a congregational singing as we attend our song service. Let's open our song book, song number 110. Sing. As we go to the second song, we are going to sing the second song as we wait for the elders to come for the elders report from their desk. So as we sing the second song, we are waiting for them as they come. Thank you very much. We are going to sing song number, song number 94. Song number 94 from our songbook, Popote Mashamba Yaja. Popote Mashamba Yaja Tele Nafaka Pevu Sing Popote mashamba ya jate lena faka pevu Popote ya ngame upebo Delena ya nani Mwe 
Thank you very much. We welcome the elder for the report. Uh, thank you. Thank you, choristers. Uh, happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, I take this opportunity once again to welcome you uh, uh, this uh, online service. Uh, we thank God for today, for the gift of life, and giving us a chance to hear his word. Today, we know the challenges uh, we have as a nation. Uh, or uh, uh, the whole world. So we have a challenge, but we thank God because uh, we can now reach uh, our members who are at home. So I have a few announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, can pray so that uh, get the announcements. Our dear loving Father, we come before thee this morning. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the chance you have given us to worship you. Father, today we, have, we are here. Father, may you be with us. All programs we have for the, for the day, Father, may you lead us until we finish. Before me, there are announcements which uh, I want to put before our members. May you be with us until we finish, for this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. Uh, I have a few announcements uh, for church board members. We'll have a meeting today at 2.30. So all board members are requested to attend. Then uh, we as you can see, we have a virtual meeting for our, our, on all our services today. So you are all welcome wherever you are. If you can reach us, so you are all welcome. Then 
we'll have a ya saben. Our church calendar will be announced officially next week, next Sabbath. So all departmental leaders, uh, you prepare, all departmental leaders, so that uh, as we go by, each department uh, should know their day, so that they plan for, for the day. Then another announcement. Uh, members are asked to give their offerings through the till, which uh, I know more, it has been circulated through uh, various groups, but the till is uh, 70, 77, 73. That one you go to, to buy goods, then you Select 70, uh, 77, 73. And uh, we are urging members because uh, uh, church expenses uh, is a lot. Even if you are worshipping at home, the expenses, the church in cars. So we request you so that when we are giving uh, the offerings, you distribute for tithe and uh, and offering so you make it clear for the treasurer to know how to distribute so i think that is the end of my announcement may god bless you Okay, we are continuing with our song service as we wait for the sermon. So each and every person, we should have a songbook so that we, we should be singing together. We are singing song number 109. Song number 109. Ani siki ae aliye yote Song number 109 Ani siki ae Sing Ani siki ae aliye yote Sana litanga e wajue wote Dunia ni kote neno wapate Atakae na aje Ni atakae, ni atakae Wani atabara na litangae Ni baba mpenzi alingana e Atakae na aje Ani jili ae Yesu asema Asikia we ae Ae mama pema Ni minji ya kweli Ni mi uzima Atakae na aje Ni atakae Ni atakae Wani atabala na litanga e Ni baba mpenzi alingana e Atakae na aje Atakae aje ndiyo ahadi 
atakaye hiyo aitarudi atakaye lake ni lahadi atakaye naje ni atakaye ni atakaye kwani atabara na litangae ni baba mpenzi alingana e atakaye na aje shall we all rise up Sifu Mungu wa neema sing Sifu Mungu wa neema enye vumbe popote waju Sifu ni baba mwana na roho bami Our most gracious master our father who art in heaven We want to thank you Lord for your goodness to us We want to thank you for these holy hours of Sabbath and as we worship you Lord we invite your presence to be with us Lord bless those who are listening to this word bless those who are praying with us from afar and unite us with your love for this we ask in Jesus name amen, amen. Uh, I welcome you once again. So we have our pastor with us. My name is uh, Ella Elmad Apunda. So I welcome all of you. And uh, I take this opportunity to welcome our pastor, Pastor. Julius Munove so pastor welcome thank you helda thank you Thank you Helda for welcome. I also take this opportunity to continue welcoming you to this Holy Sabbath. Those who are here, those who are far in their homes, I welcome you that we may be blessed together. The theme of our message of this day is remember Lord's wife. Kumbukeni mke wa Lutu. Hicho ndicho chichwa cha mafundisho yetu siku ya leo ama maumbili yetu siku ya leo. Haya ni maneno yalisungumuswa na mtumishi wa Mungu Yohana yakisemwa na Yesu mwenyewe kabla hajatoka hapa ulimwenguni Kitabu cha Luka 17 
Sari wa 32 Yesu akasema kumbukeni mkewe lutu Hapa Yesu alikuwa anazungumzia nini Unapoangalia katika Biblia utapata ya kwamba kuna maneno Yesu alikuwa anazungumza na wanafunzi wake na umati uliokuwa ukimfuata na ninaomba ya kwamba tunapoendelea kujifunza ama kusoma fungu hili kuipabanua vizuri uweze kufungua mawazo yako kwa maombi uweze kuelewa Yesu alikuwa anasema nini katika maisha yetu ya siku ya leo haya maneno yaliyozungumzwa na Yesu alizungumza miaka ya samani sana Tunaposoma historia ya Biblia tunapata ya kwamba Yesu alizungumza maneno haya kipindi cha miaka mwaka wa 30 na moja 30 na, na tatu hapo akiwa na wanafunzi wake Na tunaweza kujiuliza swali ili fungu lina maana gani Yesu alipolitumia Kumbukeni mke wa Lutu. Na unaposoma kitabu cha mwanzo pale 19 ndio unapata adidhi ya Lutu. Hapa ndipo unapata adidhi ya Sodoma na Gomora. Hapa ndipo unapata adidhi ya kuangamizwa kwa Sodoma na Ngomora. Nakumbuka Yesu akataja maneno haya ya mke wa Rutu baada ya miaka nyingi alipokuwa hapa duniani. Waandishi wanasema ya kwamba Yesu alipokuwa akizungumza maneno haya alikuwa anawaandaa wanafunzi na kuwaonyesha yale ambayo yatatokea siku za mwisho yale ambayo watakumbana nayo siku za mwisho. Na hapa alikuwa anawaeleza jinsi Sodoma na Ngomora iliyo ilivyoharibiwa. Alikuwa anawaeleza maneno yaliyokuwa yakitendeka ama mambo yaliyokuwa yakitendeka wakati hule wa Lutu zama zile za Sodoma na Ngomora na yale aliyo ajiri wakati huo Na hapa tunaambiwa ya kwamba unaposoma mstari wa 33 anasema mtu yeyote atakaye kuiponya nafsi yake ataiangamiza na yeye yoyote atakaye iangamiza ataiponya Haya maneno yanahusiana nini na mstari ulio hapo juu? Hayo maneno yanahusiana na nini na yale Yesu aliyokuwa akizungumza? Hapa anaendelea kutaja akasema 34 na waambia Usiku huo watu wawili watakuwa katika kitanda kimoja, mmoja atatwaliwa, mmoja ataachwa. Hii ni zaidi ya kwamba Yesu alipokuwa akistaja maneno ya mke wa Rutu, alikuwa anaongea na wanafunzi na umati uliokuwa unamsikiza juu ya kurudi kwake mara ya pili Alikuwa anataka kuwaeleza ufalme wa mbingu utakuwa namna gani alikuwa anataka kuwaeleza kurudi kwake mara ya pili ulimwengu utakuwa namna gani ndipo akarudisha nyuma akawaambia kumbukeni mke wa Lutu tunakumbushwa mke wa Lutu kwa sababu katika Biblia kuna miujiza ilifanyika kwa mke wa Lutu 
na tunaporudi nyuma tukiwazua na tukichambua Biblia tutapata ya kwamba kuna mambo mke wa Lutu alifanya ambayo hata sisi tunayafanya siku ya leo kuna mambo ambayo wanafunzi ama wakristo wa wakati huo walikuwa wanafanya yanayoambatana na mambo yaliyofanywa wakati ule wa Sodoma na Gomora tena saidi Ujua ya kwamba Biblia inasema ya kwamba Lutu alikuwa mtakatifu. Sababu neno la Mungu linatuambia ya kwamba Lutu aliishi katika kizazi kiliyokuwa kiofu lakini alisimama. Mke wake alikuwa naisi na yeye na mzee mtakatifu lakini hakutoboa. Kwa hivyo tulinganishe, uangalie maisha yako na bwana yako, uangalie maisha yako na mke wako, uangalie maisha yako na watoto wako, na uangalie nyuma uone familia ya Rutu vile ilikuwa. Neno linasema ya kwamba walikuwa wakinywa na wakila wakioa na kuolewa kusherehekea wakiuza wakinunua kama vile tunavyofanya siku ya leo mpaka siku ile Mungu alituma moto kuangamiza mji wa Sodoma na Gomora na ndipo tunaona ya kwamba hakuna wakati Mungu atafanya jambo kabla haya wafahamisha watu wake remember kabla Mungu hayakasirika na mji wa Sodoma na Gomora alituma malaika zake kwa Ibrahim na kumbuka pale walipokuwa wakiongea na Ibrahim juu ya mji wa Sodoma na Gomora na Ibrahim akauliza maswali mengi kwa malaika akamuuliza akaanzia kutoka juu mpaka chini akiuliza kukiwa mtu watu wa Musini ambao ni watakatifu katika mji wa Sodoma utawaangamiza pamoja nayo Mungu anasema hakuna Ibrahim alikuwa anasungumzia juu ya mtoto wake Lutu akateremka baka akaja kusungumzia Lutu peke yake na Malaika akasema hata kukiwa mmoja hataangamia atatoka Na hapa ndipo tunaona ya kwamba hata siku za leo ndivyo ilivyo ndivyo ilivyo Yesu akawakumbusha ya kwamba kumbukeni mke wa Lutu Na ndipo tuliona katika kitabu cha Amosi tatu Sari wa saba, neno la Mungu linasema ya kwamba Mungu atafanya jambo lolote kabla haya wafunulia watumishi wake manabii. Haya ni maneno ambayo yamesungumuzwa. Na hapa tunaona ya kwamba Mungu atafanya jambo lolote aliwafunulia Yesu Kristo wanafuzi wake kama nabii akawaambia ya kwamba kumbukeni Muke wa Lutu akiwaeleza juu ya ufalme wa mbingu na maneno haya ni yetu siku ya leo. Na ndipo tunaona Malaika wa Mungu alipofika katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora. Neno linasema Malaika alifika masaa ya jioni. Akakuta mzee Lutu katika lango la mchi. Na walipoingia wakakutana la Lutu. Na wakaongea na Lutu. Na Lutu akawakaribisha katika nyumba yake. Saa zingine tunajiuliza maswali wakati malaika walipoenda katika nyumba ya Lutu mke wake alikuwa 
Tunaweza kujiuliza maswali mengi. Kwa sababu maneno yale ambayo yalisungumushwa ndani ya nyumba ya Lutu na ma- malaika atuoni kama mke alikuwa labda alikuwa ameanza kuranda randa alikuwa mtu wa kuranda randa kwa soko tunaweza you can imagine that kwa nini tunasema hivi kwa sababu mke wa Rutu angekuwa pale ndani angeyasikia yale malaika wanasungumuza na angeshikana na bwana yake na waende bila kusumbuka lakini tunapoendelea kuchambua biblia tunapata ya kwamba he, she might have, she was inside the house lakini atuoni mahali ambapo anasungumuza hii ni kwa nini ni kwa sababu hata wakati malaika waliingia ndani watengenezewe chakula biblia inatuambia ya kwamba vijana wa muji walitoka wakaenda kwa nyumba ya Lutu wakagonga mlango wakamwambia ya kwamba fungua hawa wameingia hapa tunataka kuwajua na unajua tunaposumia neno ya kuwajua si vile tunalitumia kama kujua kwa nini kwa sababu ilifika mahali Lutu akamwambia msijaribu kufanya mahofu Niko na mbinti zangu hapa Bikira wawili Naomba ni watolee hinje mfanye vile mnataka lakini msijaribu kudhuru hawa Kwa hivyo hii kujua si vile ambapo tunaweza kuichukua ilikuwa saidi ya kujua kuonyesha ya kwamba ile soko ama tuseme wale watu waliokuwa pale walikuwa wameoza kimawazo wale walikuwa pale walikuwa wamedhoofika kimaisha mambo ya mbingu hayakuwa katika mawazo yao walikuwa wanaishi maisha ambayo si ya mbingu lakini tunaambiwa hivi mtumishi wa Mungu aliyekuwa mwaminifu malaika wakamwambia wakamuuliza maswali kuna yeyote ambaye ni wako ako hapa angalau uweze kumuokoa unaposoma mwanzo 14 19 msali wa 12 15 mwanzo Kumina tisa mstari huo wa mbili neno linasema hivi basi wale watu wakamwambia mlutu ye yeah, unaye mtu hapa saidi mkeo wanao na mbinti zako na wote ulio nao katika ji, mji watoe katika mahali hapa maana tutaparibu sisi mahali hapa kwa kuwa kilio chake kimezidi mbele za Bwana naye Bwana amepeleka tuparibu Lutu akatoka akasema na wakweze waliopoza binti zake wakasema ondokeni mtoke katika mahali hapa kwa sababu bwana hatawaribu mji huu lakini akawa kama achezaye machoni pa wakweze neno linasema ya kwamba lutu alipatiwa nafasi ili kama kuna mmoja ambaye ni wa familia yake amweze kumuokoa na Lutu akatoka akaenda kwa wakweze the sons in law waliokuwa wameoa wasichana wake hakawaambia watoto wangu naomba tuweze kutoka kwa sababu hii muji inaharibiwa akamwambia mzee umeruka kichwa 
hakuna kitu kama hii we fikiria lut alirudi kwa nyumba akiwa na mna gani Neno linasema ya kwamba ilipofika mwisho asubuhi malaika makaeka wakaona ya kwamba kuna kucha wakaona lutu ataki kutoka anagaaga kwa sababu anafikiria yu ya watoto wake na neno linasema ya kwamba hata ni malaika waliwashika mkono wa watoe katika nyumba akiwa yeye mke wake na mbinti wake wawili wale wengine wakapotelea katika muchi tunaweza kujiuliza swali kwa nini mke wa lutu alipoteza maisha yake mke wa lutu hakuchomeka ndani ya muchi lakini alipoteza maisha nje ya muji. Lord's wife lost her life because of looking back. Na tunaposungumza juu ya kuangalia nyuma, si kuangalia nyuma kule tunafikiria. Yes. Mara nyingi kwa sababu ya kuelewa kwetu tunafikiria mke wa Rutu alipinduka hivi akaangalia nyuma tunaweka maneno mengi sana It is more than that This is more than a glance over the shoulders Yes Hivi tu si hivyo It was looking that indulged reluctant to leave yes katika moyo wake alikuwa amesemba ama amesembea hakutaka kutoka katika mawazo yake alikuwa anafikiria yuu ya kurudi katika muji wa Sodoma na Gomora lakini alikuwa ameambiwa ya kwamba aache mji wa Sodoma na Gomora ili aweze kuokoa maisha yake but she couldn't let it go and she paid with her life na ndipo Yesu akasema ya kwamba atakaye ilinda nafsi yake mwenyewe ataipoteza Ilo fungu 33 Yesu alikuwa anazungumzia juu ya maisha yetu Muke wa Lutu aliona vile vitu vilivyokuwa katika mji wa Sodoma na Ngomora ikiwa ya dhamana sana bahada ya kutoka Lakini neno linatuambia ya kwamba kwa sababu ya hii akapoteza maisha yake Kuna mambo matatu nataka uelewe hapa. Itakuwa hivyo hata kuja kwa Yesu mara ya pili. Jambo la kwanza nataka uelewe ni hili. Yaani atari ya kushikamana na ulimwengu huu sana. Jambo la kwanza nataka ujue atari ya kushikamana na ulimwengu huu sana 
Unaposoma kitabu cha mwanzo ine e, 19 mstari wa ine Kuna mambo pale unaseli kuyaelewa vizuri sana. Lakini sitaki nilangalie hiyo kwanza. Nataka tuangalie kitabu cha Wakorintho wa kwanza. Sorry, Wakorintho wa pili tuangalie sita mstari wa saba. Kuna maneno nataka uangalie pale. Sita mstari wa saba. Neno la Mungu linasema nini? Kwa hiyo tokeni tokeni kati, kati yao mtatengwe mtakatengwe nao asema Bwana musingue musinguze kitu kilicho kichafu nami nitawaharibisha 18 Nitakuwa baba kwenu Nanyi mutakuwa kwangu wana wa kiume na wa kike. Tokeni. Sisi tulio teuliwa. Sisi tulio hitwa wa teule wa Mungu. Tunastahili kuishi katika ulimwengu lakini tuishi kama watu wameteuliwa. Lut aliingia katika muji wa Sodoma na Gomora akijua ya kwamba yeye ameteuliwa na akaishi kama mteule na Mungu katika kizazi kilichochukua kiofu kukatokea mtu mtakatifu na hapa tunaambiwa ya kwamba maisha tunayohisi ulimwenguni huu tunastahili kuishi kama watu wameteuliwa Tunastahili kuishi kama wageni katika dunia hii tukijua ya kwamba hapa si kwetu. Kwetu ni wapi? Ni mbinguni. Yohana anasema nini? Unaposoma kitabu Yohana anasema maneno haya. Katika kitabu cha Yohana mbili mstari wa tano. 15 inasema hivi Yohana 2:15 akafanya kiko, kitoko cha kaba akawatoa wote katika ekalu na kondoo na ngombe akamwaga fedha za wenye kufunja fedha akaipindua meza zao akawaambia wale waliokuwa wakiuza jiwa yaondoeni haya msifanye nyumba ya baba yangu kuwa nyumba ya biashara haya ni maneno yaliyosungumuzwa na Yesu sisi wakati huu tumeingia katika biashara. Atuelewi kile kinaendelea katika dunia hii. Tumeingia katika biashara hata katika kanisa. Atuelewi? Tumeingia katika ulimwengu. Atuelewi sisi ni nani? Hatuna tofauti na ulimwengu. Tofauti yetu inapatikana wakati tunaingia sabato siku kama ya leo lakini hata hivyo hata tukiwa kanisani mawazo yetu yako katika ulimwengu attachment to the world Yesu akawaambia ya kwamba msiupende ulimwengu na mambo yake. Mke wa Lutu akapenda ulimwengu. Akakumbuka wamama wale ambao walikuwa wanaenda meringo round pamoja, 
akakumbuka marafiki zake waliokuwa wakikaa pamoja wakisungumuza akakumbuka vitu ambavyo nakuwa navyo katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora akasahau yeye ni mteule hata sisi siku ya leo Yesu anakurudi ni nini ambalo umeshikana nalo ni nini ambalo linaweza kufanya usione ufalme wa Mungu ni nini ambalo linaweza kufanya urudi katika ulimwengu huu kumbuka mke wa lutu jambo lingine tunasaili kulielewa ni kwamba we should set our priorities tunastahili kuwa na kuweka mikakati kuweka vitu za kwanza si wa za kwanza na za mwisho si za mwisho katika ulimwengu huu kuna vitu nyingi ambazo simeshika mawazo yetu na nguvu zetu sote. Na tunasaili kuelewa ya kwamba kuna vitu vya kwanza katika maisha. Unaposoma kitabu hicho cha Luka 17 mstari wa 28 na 19. Yesu alizungumzia jambo hili vizuri mke wa lutu hakuweka vitu vizuri kuna vitu zinazali kuweka kwanza Yesu akasema ya kwamba utavuteni ufalume wa Mungu kwanza na yale mengine yatafanya nini yatawafuata yataongezewa mke wa lutu aliweka kwa kwanza kutafuta mali ya ulimwengu huu mke wa lutu alitafuta kwanza kufanya urafiki na ulimwengu huu saidi akasahau kuna urafiki wetu na Yesu akasahau ya kwamba kuna yule ambaye alimpeleka yule ambaye amemtuma akasahau kwa hivyo hata malaika walipokuwa wakiongea na Lutu yeye hakuna kitu alikuwa anashika alikuwa anafikiria juu ya mambo ya ulimwengu Umewahi kutembelewa na mtu anakuongeleza juu ya kitu lakini hauko hapo na unasema ndio ndio lakini hauko hapo Uko dunia ingine na akienda unaanza kuuliza yeye alikuwa anasema nini This is what had happened to the wife of Lot. Yesu anasema hivi katika kitabu cha Mathayo 6 mstari wa 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Kwanza tafuta ufalme wa Mungu na utakatifu wake. Na yale mengine yatarudi kuja baadaye We must put God first in everything Mrs. Root let her the priorities to be first and she forgot God And that is why we are told he paid the consequences with his life. Number three. Avoid to be as cover. Yes, nafik. Unaposoma 
mwanzo 14 19 mstari wa 14 Lutu alipotoka kuenda kuona watoto wake alipowasungumzia walidharau walidharau wakasema mzee wewe kichwa imeruka hii unatuambia ni nini na msee Rutu akarudi tu yes how many parents want their children and they refuse to listen how many times as the spirit of god want us and we refuse to listen scoopers wale wanasema ya kwamba tumeanza kusikia kuja kwa Yesu miaka nyingi sana wazazi wetu walingojea Yesu wakafa ni huyu Yesu atakuja lini the sons in law and lord's wife became scoopers Peter says second Peter chapter 3 second Peter chapter 3 If you are with me there We are going to read from verse 3. Mchijua kwanza neno hili ya kwamba katika ziku za mwisho watakuja na dhiaka zao watu wenye kudhiaki wafuatao tamaa zao wenyewe na kusema iko wapi ahadi ile ya kuja kwake kwa maana tangu hapo babu zetu walio polala vitu vyote vinakaa ali hiyo hiyo tangu mwanzo wa kuumbwa maana ufumba macho yao wasione neno hili ya kwamba zilikuwako mbingu tangu zamani na hinji pia imefa, ime, ime nyizwa katika kutoka katika maji na ndani ya maji kwa neno la Mungu yani kuna watu ambao hata tukizungumza kuja kwa Yesu mara ya pili they are not there wanasema nini wanasema anakuja kufanya nini siache kwanza nipate mali kidogo wanasema sasa hii Yesu tunaambiwa ni uongo Mtu Yesu anakuja mtu wa kifa. Kuna watu wako hivyo. And they are they, they are in the church. Na ndipo tunaambiwa ya kwamba tuangalie tusiwe kama mwanafiki. Tusiwe watu wa kudharau. Ni nini ambalo tunataka kusoma katika fungu hili? Lile ambalo tunataka kusoma katika fungu hili ni kwamba kama vile ilivyokuwa siku za nu ndivyo itakuwa siku za mwisho What was there Unaposoma vizuri katika kitabu hicho cha Ezekiel Ezekiel 16 49 mpaka hamsini inaeleza jinsi ilivyokuwa wakati wa Sodoma na Gomora Ukisoma fungu hili litakupatia vizuri ni nini ambalo lilikuwa linafanyika wakati huu sita 
na tuangalia mstari huo wa 49 ambao neno la Mungu linasema tazama uofu wa umbu lako Sodoma ulikuwa huu kiburi na kushiba chakula na kufanikiwa hayo yalikuwa ndani yake na binti zake tena hakutia nguvu mkono wa maskini na muitaji nao walifunja walifuna, walifuna wakafanya machukizo mbele za Mungu kwa sababu hiyo aliwaondoa hapo walipoyaona yes kitu cha kwanza majifuno tunalinga ya kwamba tunajua Yesu tunalinga unajua unalinga kwa njia gani Sodoma na Gomora majifuno yalikuwa yamejaa Jambo la pili walikuwa wameshiba Yes Walikuwa wameshiba Awao ni itaji Tunapozungumzia kushiba wengi wamesoma Biblia wameshiba Awao ni haja ya Biblia tena Hawaoni wamesikia mambo mengi sana juu ya Yesu mpaka wametosheka. Hawataki kusikia saidi. Wamechukua neno la Mungu kama kawaida. Sodoma na Gomora walichukua mambo kama kawaida. Na saidi uofu ulikuwa umejaa. Usoga Unaposoma kitabu hicho cha mwanzo 19 mstari wa 4 walipoenda katika nyumba ya Lutu alimwambia toa wanaume tunataka kulala nao Usoga ulikuwa umejaa Na unaposoma historia vizuri unapata ya kwamba ilikuwa imeharibika kiasi ya kwamba Mungu akasema hakuna haja ya hii hii watu kuishi katika hii dunia. Mnajua hata siku ya leo hakuna mahali panaitwa Sodoma na Gomora. Iliisha kabisa. Ukisema uende ukaonyesha Sodoma na Gomora, utaiona. Hakuna. Because of the wickedness. Ni nini ambalo saa hii ni tofauti na wakati ule? Saa hii tuna za wanaume, si ndio? Wako makanisani wanafungwa. Muke na Bwana, na ni wanaume wawili. Unashangaa hii ni dunia gani? Saa hii enda kwa matanguro huko, utapata wanaume wamekuwa kama wanawake, kuuza mili. Sijui wanauza mwili gani. Wanawake enda ukawakute huko nao, wanauza mili. Unashindwa hii ni dunia gani? He. Mambo yameharibika. Watu kuuana saa hii ukiangalia katika magazeti, katika habari za dunia sote ni vifo. Mtu anainuka, anakuwa na rafiki ya msichana, anaua. Msichana anaua. Bwana anaua. Muke anaua. Yaani hakuna kitu kizuri katika ulimwengu huu. Mafikara machafu. Na ndipo tunaambiwa ya kwamba haya mambo yote yaliyokuwa wakati wa Sodoma na Gomora Yesu akasema yatakuwa siku za mwisho. Utakuwa kama mtu wa mke wa Lutu. Tunaposungumzia mke wa Lutu tunasungumzia wa Kristo. Unaweza kuwa mwanaume lakini uwe mke wa Lutu. Unaweza kuwa mwanamke uwe mke wa Lutu. 
unaso ya akili yako na mambo ya dunia hii anasa za dunia hii usahau ya kwamba Yesu anarudi unapoendelea kusoma utapata ya kwamba usoga ulikuwa katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora mabibi wengi hapa ndiyo tunaambiwa ya kwamba unaposoma utapata ya kwamba polygamy was lumbered multiple wives and the husbands yes hakuna mke alikuwa na bwana mmoja Sodoma na Gomora kama vile kuko leo hakuna mzee ako na mke mmoja Yeah. Kama yongelewa kwa ndurubini hivi. Uone vile wanawake wanako na wanaume wengi na wanaume wako na wanawake wengi. Unamupata kanisani ni mzuri lakini huko nje ako na wake kama ishirini Unapata mwanamke ako kanisani mzuri sana lakini huko nje anasema ni bwana mmoja ako na ishirini Lut akujua mke wake vile hako lakini walikuwa wanakaa na yeye paka siku ile waliotoka akajua mke wake vile alivyo siku ya mwisho itakuwa hivyo tunastahili tujiadhari tusije tukalipia na maisha yetu kama mke wa lutu alilipia na maisha yake akawa jiwe la chumvi na mzee wake akaendelea akuangalia nyuma akaachwa mpale tunaambiwa tuangalie msalabani unaposoma kitabu cha waebrania kitabu cha waebrania mbili neno la Mungu linatuambia nini Waebrania mbili iko na maneno haya Mstari wa kwanza Inasema basi sisi pia kwa kuwa tumezungukwa na wingu kubwa la mashahidi namna hii na tuweke kando kila mziko mzito na dhambi ile itungazayo kwa upezi na tupige mbio kwa saburi katika yale mashindano yaliyowekwa mbele yetu tukitazama Yesu mwenye kuanzisha na mwenye kutimiza imani yetu ambaye kwa ajili ya furaha aliyowekewa mbele yake aliustahimili msalaba na kuidharau aibu naye ameketi mkono wa kuhume wa kiti cha henzi cha Mungu Neno la Mungu linatuambia nini Tumesungukwa na mashahidi wengi wengi ambao walikuwa watu wa imani Tumeshungukwa na watu wengi waliokuwa hawana imani. Lakini tunaambiwa hivi. Tuachane na miziko ambayo inatusuia. Kukimbia. Na dhambi zile ndogo, dhambi ndogo zinazotukwaza za midomo yetu. Na tukimbie mbio Tukimtazama Yesu ambaye ndiye mwanzilishi na mkamilishaji ya wakofu wetu. Tutoe macho yetu kwa vitu vya dunia hii. Vitu vya dunia hii viko leo unalala, unasiacha, sinaendelea. Lakini ufalume wa Mungu ni wa milele. Hombi langu ni kwamba tunapoendelea kujiandaa kwa kuja kwa Yesu mara ya pili tukumbuke mke wa Lutu yale ambayo yalikuwa yanatendeka wakati huo yatushusuie kumwangalia Yesu. Tumwangalie Yesu 
ndiye mkamilishaji wa imani yetu na Mungu atubariki tuweze kuomba pamoja Mungu na baba yetu ishie mbinguni umenena nasi kupitia katika chuo chako umetukumbusha yale yaliyotokea wakati wa zamani katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora umetukumbusha yu ya familia ambayo ulikuwa umechakua ya Lut na hapa tunaona ya kwamba familia ya Lut wengi walipotea wali katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora lakini tunaomba ya kwamba tukiwa katika ulimwengu huu kwa sababu ulituita tusipotee tazama miji ambayo imewakilishwa katika kanisa lako tunaomba ya kwamba utupatie upendo Upati, tupatie umoja ili tunaposungumza mmoja kwa mwingine tuweze kujengana na kuelekea mbinguni tusije tukawa kama familia ya lutu ambao wengi wa familia walipotelea katika mji wa Sodoma na Gomora Baba naombea msikilizaji aliye mbali aliyesikia ujumbe huu hebu roho wako mtakatifu aweze kumueleza Saidi amfunulie Saidi aelewe Saidi kulinda kushinda vile nilivyoeleza ili aweke maisha yake vizuri utakaporudi mara ya pili aweze kusema huyu ndiye Yesu tuliyokuwa tunamngoja baba hata sisi tunaomba ya kwamba utuandae uangaze macho yetu ikuangalie wewe mwenyewe ili utakaporudi nasi tuseme ya kwamba haleluya huyu ndiye Yesu tuliyokuwa tunamngoja tuende nawe mbinguni baba ndiye ya kutubariki wale wagonjwa wako nyumbani tunawaweka mikononi mwako baba uwazuru na uanguze na mkono wako wa uponyaji wale wako mahospitalini baba tunawakumbuka wakati huu nyosha mkono wako uanguze ili waweze kupata amani waweze kupata uponyaji utokao kwako wainue jina lako baba wale ambao wamepoteza wapendwa wao baba tunawakumbuka wakati huu uwe faraja kwao uwapatie faraja inayowatosha asante baba kwa kusikia maombi yetu kwa sababu tumeomba katika jina la Yesu ambaye ni bwana na mwokozi wa maisha yetu amen Thank you very much for the Salmon team. I think we've come to the end of our divine service. And for a short while, we are going to do a song service as we wait for any announcement that may arise. We turn to our song number 78. Mpakalini bwana utaka ambali sing mpakalini bwana utaka ambali kumetuchosha moyo kukawia hivi 
Song number 57. Song number 57. Usi ikata e kazi ya kebwana sing. Usi ikata e kazi ya kebwana Tayari kuifanya kazi Uende popote mungu wakitapo Na we utaona furo hakazi ni Doa we usikatae Doa we uifanya kazi Use kata e kazi yake bwana ili atimaye Use kata zweju Use kata e kazi yake bwana kwani kawia fanya kazi leo mavuno me upe Wachache wavuni onye shafuraha kwa kazi ya bwana Toa we usikatae Joe uifanye kazi Usikatae kazi yake bwana Ili atimae Usikata zeju Usikata e Kazi yake bwana Kukata pendo Kwa koni atari Sayare ema Yesu akiomba Ziunga medambi Sifu tuwe minguni Njoa we usikatae Njoa we uifanye kazi Usikatae kazi ya kebwana Ili atimae usikatazwe juu Thank you very much. Let's welcome Elder for announcement. Uh, thank you, choristers, for the service. Uh, so now we have finished our service for today.
uh, program for today. Uh, I just want to say that the service is still available in our Facebook page. Seventh Day Adventist Church to Maini. You can still view it. You can like it. You can share. But for the YouTube, uh, it will be announced later because there are uh, things to be done. It will be communicated maybe in the course of the week. But we hope by next Sabbath, uh, YouTube will be, will be available. So I think we can just uh, have a word of prayer, then uh, we close. Baba wetu na mungu wetu, tunakuskuru masa haya tena. Baba mekua nasi, tangu tulipo ansa vipindi za subui, paka wakati huu. Baba, tunajikabidhi mkononi mwako, wakati huu, ambao tunaenda kwa vipindi zingine. Kwa nasi, kwa nasi siku ya leo, hadi siku ingine tena, ambao tutakutana, na katika jina la Yesu, ni mama na kwa mini. Thank you. So now, you have finished. We have come to the end. But for board members from 2.30, we have a meeting here. Down the
Nikimwe 